In 1975, a movie emerged that left an indelible mark on the film industry. A gripping tale set in a dystopian future, Rollerball challenged norms and ignited discussions. As you dive into this cinematic journey, brace yourself for a roller coaster of emotions funny, shocking, and sad facts await. What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? When was the first time you watched this film? Now, reflect on your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gin. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear them. Keep watching for more surprises and let the nostalgia flow. A viewer first encountered the 1975 film Rollerball upon its release and found it captivating. Initially hesitant to revisit it for fear of disappointment, they eventually returned to unravel the details that had left a lasting impression. Surprisingly, the movie has aged well, offering a plausible dystopian vision of the future with enduring resonance. Set in 2018, it much like Blade Runner set in 2019, intriguingly omits mobile phones while portraying distinct worlds. Rollerball, despite its futuristic setting, transcends traditional science fiction, serving as a commentary on the power dynamics of global corporations, the stark divide between social classes, and the self-serving nature of the elite. The film adeptly navigates these themes without succumbing to heavy-handed storytelling, exemplified by scenes like the post-game Gathering with Trees. The sparing use of the titular games allows the narrative's real essence to emerge. Jonathan, the central character, undergoes a subtle transformation as they become increasingly aware of the world beyond the game while maintaining unwavering loyalty to their team and the sport itself. Although specifics about the plot are withheld, the viewer strongly recommends it, praising its ability to address societal issues with finesse. In conclusion, Rollerball stands out for its timeless exploration of societal dynamics and the individual's place within them. In Rollerball, specific shirt numbers are exclusively designated for the motorcycle riders on both teams. The exterior shots showcasing the Energy Corporation building are, interestingly, repurposed footage of the corporate headquarters of BMW in Munich, West Germany. Additionally, the bowl-shaped library building depicted in the film is the old BMW Museum, situated just a few steps to the left of the headquarters entrance. A noteworthy aspect of the movie's production is the realistic portrayal of the rollerball game. The cast, extras, and stunt performers actively engaged in playing the game between takes on the set, underscoring the commitment to authenticity in the film's depiction. This seamless integration of motorcycle rider shirt numbers, the use of authentic locations, and the genuine engagement of the cast in the rollerball game during breaks contribute to the film's immersive experience. The unconventional choice of BMW's headquarters and museum adds an unexpected layer of realism to the futuristic setting. In essence, the attention to detail and commitment to authenticity, both in the portrayal of the sport and choice of filming locations, enrich the overall viewing experience, making it a unique and intriguing piece of cinematic history. Dieter Mayer faced the challenge of sourcing enough extras to lend credibility to the depiction of Tokyo in the film. The crew distributed flyers at local hotels, attracting 150 Asians eager to participate in the required filming days. James Kahn, when asked about the film's plot, humorously responded, it's about 90 minutes, although the actual runtime is 125 minutes. While Jonathan E.S. last name remains unspoken in the film, an executive at the party mentions Evans is out, making it clear he refers to Jonathan. The context eliminates ambiguity. These behind-the-scenes insights, from recruiting extras for authenticity to James Kahn's witty remark, and the subtle reveal of Jonathan E.S. last name, offer a glimpse into the meticulous details of Rollerball's production. These anecdotes contribute to the film's unique charm and behind-the-scenes dynamics, providing additional layers to the viewer's experience. In Rollerball, the commitment to authenticity is not limited to the portrayal of the sport and choice of filming locations, but extends to the challenges faced during production. The anecdotes about recruiting extras, James Kahn's humorous response, and the subtle character details add depth to the film, enriching its narrative in unexpected ways. This pragmatic approach to filmmaking enhances the overall viewing experience, showcasing Rollerball as a noteworthy piece of cinematic history. William Harrison penned the original short story Rollerball Murder for Esquire magazine in 1973, later adapting it into the screenplay for this film. 
The Tokyo fans chant, Ganbare Tokyo, meaning do your best, Tokyo, during the Tokyo-Houston game adds cultural authenticity. Notably, before the rule changes depicted in the film, the match's record deaths were already at 9 out of 24. The narrative's foundation in Harrison's story, the genuine crowd chant, and the grim statistics shape the film's raw and unrelenting portrayal of a futuristic sport, enhancing its gritty realism. In the liner notes of its Region 2 DVD, director Norman Jewison acknowledged being influenced by Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. This influence is evident in the film's repetitive use of zooms, incorporation of classical music, and modern architecture featuring concrete and glass structures. An interesting note about the film's credits is that it's among the first to include the names of stunt performers in the final credits, highlighting their contribution to the production. The final scene of Rollerball bears a striking resemblance to that of Raquel Welch's Kansas City Bomber. The similarity extends to the crowd chanting the main character's name as they triumphantly navigate the arena. This comparison adds a layer of intrigue to Rollerball's conclusion, offering a connection to another cinematic moment. Such details offer a deeper understanding of Rollerball's cinematic context and contribute to the viewer's perspective on its production. The 1975 movie Rollerball stands out for being the first major film release to showcase the short-lived United Artists logo with blue lights and sparkling gold 3D lettering, a distinctive feature lasting until late 1976. Notably, many extras in the film agreed to cut their fashionably long hair for an additional wage, ensuring the film's aesthetic wasn't tied to its contemporary era. Contrary to rumors, no fatalities occurred during the stunts, though some resulted in serious injuries, leading to hospitalization. This dispels any misconceptions surrounding the film's production. This candid portrayal of Rollerball's behind-the-scenes details, from logo choices to extra actors' commitment and the truth about stunned injuries, sheds light on the pragmatic aspects of its production. This, in turn, adds a layer of authenticity to the viewer's understanding of the film, making Rollerball a distinct piece of cinematic history. The crowd scenes in the film leverage audio recordings from an Arkansas TCU basketball game in Fayetteville, Arkansas, adding an authentic touch to the ambience. The pistol featured in a scene wielded by a drunken party guest to incinerate pine trees is a Ruger Standard 22 caliber target pistol from 1949, intricately modified to resemble a futuristic weapon. Norman Jewison chose James Kahn for the role of Jonathan E. based on his portrayal of real life, Chicago Bears running back Brian Piccolo in the TV film Brian's Song. The use of real sports audio, the modification of a vintage firearm, and the strategic casting decisions contribute to the film's authenticity and behind-the-scenes dynamics, enhancing the viewer's understanding of Rollerball's production.